YouTube, what's up? Hey, well, this was supposed to be filmed last weekend, but it's going to be filmed today. So, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, today, we're going to talk about old Billy Bob here. So, a lot of people have been asking me um, kind of how the consistency of this smoker is. Uh, you know, temperature front to back, top to bottom. You know, how easy is it to cook on? How big the fire do you need? What's the wood consumption? Blah, 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 blah. All great questions. They're super, super uh, important questions to have answered. So, today what I'm going to do is... I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of how I run uh, this particular smoker, um, what I do to to prep it. Okay, Mr. B, go away. Go away, Mr. B. Uh, I've got a bee chasing me. But, um, you know, there's a lot of factors that play into, into how a smoker performs, what, what you do to ensure that it runs consistently every time I'll say it I've said it before I'll say it again this smoker is the easiest smoker I have ever cooked on hands down the easiest smoker so in saying that I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the back here the firebox and I'm going to kind of kind of work forward a little bit so Typically, um, I might even start, um, we're going to start at wood selection, size of, of the pieces that I, that I use, um, all play into how consistent your, your temperature is from fueling, you know, uh, the, the times that you need to, to add more fuel. This smoker doesn't doesn't take much fuel every in between fuelings. So, um, with that, I'm gonna get to kind of what my what my wood pile looks like, the size of my my uh, initial sticks are, and kind of what I do to to uh, get them to the sizes that that offer the most consistent temperature fluctuations uh, when you when you open the the firebox door to you know maintaining that that consistent temperature there are there are temperature swings i'm not going to lie to you there are but in saying that you can minimize that by doing a few simple things so i'm going to pause this and then when i'm going to get over to my fire my fire uh rick well, my firewood rick and uh kind of start there so here, here's my firewood rick. I've got a little bit of a pallet right there that I use to, to help me, you know, prop the grates up when I'm washing them with power washer and all that good stuff. But um, these are typical 16-inch uh, standard log logs that you would get from any firewood supplier. Um, they're probably anywhere from two inches wide, clear up to five to six inches wide you've got some pretty good sized pieces there so i have found that two inch wide by two inch wide if you can get them two inch roughly you know a four square inch in section by 16 inches long uh, you should be be pretty good so what i end up doing is i take these pieces here and then I'll split them down and that's how I get my four inch four square inch in section roughly you know so what I do is I went to Harbor Freight and got me a oh inexpensive little electric wood splitter and that's what I use to to split my pieces down so you know I'll get back to this here in a second so these are the sizes that I currently run. You know, I mean, it's it's about this big. Some pieces are a little bit bigger. Some pieces are a little bit smaller. But 
you know, roughly about that size. Um, this this area here is about good for 16, 17 hour cook. You know, there's quite a few sticks in there, but uh, they 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 will last that that good amount of time. So, but enough about the wood. You know, just remember, 16 inches long, about four inches square on the end section. Um, about six, you know, like some good good quality sticks. Don't put junk in there. Um, it, this this cooker will cook anything, but or burn anything, of course. But um, anyway, so what we have here is I'm getting ready for a for a wedding cook this weekend, or actually tonight. Uh, the, wed the wedding is tomorrow. Getting things kind of fired up. Uh, Sweet blue barbecue. Go like our uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're on uh, Instagram and YouTube. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I've got just a simple wood uh, weed burner. It's what I use. Um, I use um, you know, Royal Oak or or anything that is a good hardwood uh, lump charcoal to to start everything with takes about five or ten minutes to get this thing going um, once this is this is kind of established I'll go ahead and pour it into the the four sticks of wood that I've got kind of stacked in a crisscross uh, section in there which I'll show you here in a in a little bit but typically that's that's kind of how I will get the fire started just use a propane torch it's pretty simple just set it in there and prop it up and let her let her go to go to work but uh, again you know this is this is Billy Bob it's my 250 gallon custom pit big Phil's uh, pits out of Cattle Mills Texas built it for me uh, it's named appropriately after my dad that passed away in 2020 um, and uh, loved barbecue, so I thought it would serve his memory memory well by uh, naming this pit after him. But anyway, after every cook, I typically clean it out. Um, I'll take my pressure washer, which is that dude right there. Bought that one from Walmart for about 300 bucks. I think it's a black bear or something like that. Um, but that's what I use to pressure wash the grates and then I take my spatula and, and clean it out uh, and get all the grease and crap from from underneath it I typically use a about six inch wide spatula to clean it all out and just toss it into a uh, an ace bucket or whatever and uh, I'm trying something different with it to kind of lump all the grease together it's easier to kind of dispose of um, just use some some kitty litter or whatever put it in the bottom drains and clumps a little bit better but so this is kind of what uh, my setup is I've got just an inexpensive Weber probe and then I have my uh, fireboard too um in, in this case here, I bought from Harbor Freight, like 40 bucks, something like that. It's really good, it's got pickable foam, it's pretty awesome. That's what I use to, to keep all the weather off the fire fireboard, and uh, yeah, makes transporting really convenient and whatnot. But uh, these are the 3D printed uh, um, temperature probe. Uh, what do you want to call them? Oh, <laughs> I really don't know what you would call them. That's uh, what I keep my temperature probes on. Let's see, it's uh, like this right up there. I 3D printed those. Got a lot of pretty cool things, but you can find those on Thingiverse. But um, yep, yeah, that's that's kind of 
kind of it in a nutshell for the for the uh, temperature probe setup. Not too fancy, but uh, as you can hear, we're getting the fire going. She's uh, she's kind of roaring in there a little bit, and then I'll uh, I'll probably go ahead and shut her down here in a minute and let her continue to to do her thing. But like I said, just a pretty simple propane tank weed burner you can find that at tractor supply or or whatever i think the weed burner is about 60 bucks for this this particular one um so yeah anyway i'm gonna pause this and uh continue on whenever i've got the fire going okay so it's been about oh four or five minutes since i uh stopped the the end of the last little segment but I took the uh, charcoal chimney, dumped it into my crisscross pieces, and it took, oh, you know, a minute or so for it to finally catch. But that's the kind of fire you want rolling in, in your pit. You don't want it to just smolder, right? A pit you gotta have a clean burn. This is what you would consider a clean burn, right? Um, this will get your pit up to temp real, real fast. Uh, you're not gonna have, you know, bad smoke or or whatever. If if your pit isn't doing this, um, you need to give it more oxygen. You, you have to have a good clean burn in your pit, otherwise your your food's going to taste kind of funky because it, it's it's going to have a lot of creosote in the smoke. And you want good, clean heat coming out your flue, the smokestack, with just a little bit of smoke. The rest of it's in the chamber. And trust me on this, it it makes all the difference in the world. But this is the kind of fire that you want. Um, so once once this burns down and you get a good solid coal bed, uh, you're pretty much ready to start start cooking something. Because it's not going to take very long. Like I said, we're already up. Oh, your bottom grates about 200, top grates about 235, something like that. Um, Some of these are kind of slow on their ramp up because mine's showing about 300 degrees and there is a little bit of difference. Uh, so this one's about 10 degrees off of what, maybe 16 degrees off of what what uh, my digital probes are showing, but about 250 degrees. It'll get up to 300 pretty quick on here. Um, but there is a little bit of a variation in between your digital and the analog gauges. But, like I said, there's hardly any smoke coming out of there. I mean, it's just heat. So, it'll get temp real fast. We'll let this burn down. Like I said, that's the kind of fire that you want going. Leave this thing rolling until you get it uh, up to temp. You know, so while your coal bed is, is being established, um, I'm going to touch, well, while your coal bed is being established, you can go in and prep your meat or, or do whatever. You know, it's going to take 30, 30 to 45 minutes for this thing to finally burn down. And then you can put your logs on there. So uh, you want good dry wood. You don't want green wood, you don't want wet wood, you don't want none of that stuff. A lot of people say, oh, soak your chips, let it let it smoke. It's gonna smoke anyway, because it's burning. So, uh, that old myth about smoke, uh, you know, soaking your chips to make them last longer and smoke, yeah, it'll smoke, but it's not gonna taste very good. Realistically, it's not. You want a good, clean burn, um, especially in the offset, it's indirect heat, so um, you you really want to uh, get a good fire going all the time. 
Uh, that way your, your cooking chamber carries that heat all the way through your cook, especially with like what I'm cooking tonight. I'm cooking brisket and I'm co cooking pulled pork. Brisket's, uh, a lot of people have trouble with it. I, for some reason, don't. Um, I got lucky and learned uh, a method that, that seems to work for me every time. So, um, you know, it's pretty simple. Bring it up to 150 degrees. Um, for however long it takes to get to 150 degrees on the thickest part of the meat, on your point, not the flat, on the point. Once it gets to 150, wrap it in butcher's paper, stick it back on until it gets to 203. The stall's going to piss you off because you think it's not getting any hotter. Look up what the definition of the stall is. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail what it is on this video because it's, you know, the meat's contracting and, and it's just, it's just working, you know. So, sorry I had to pause the video. I had to sneeze. But anyway, this is the fire that you want. So, another question people ask me. Okay, well, how's it, how even is the temp across? It's very, very even. Now, there's about a 50 to 60 degree swing between top and bottom. So, oh, did I mention? <gasps> Insulated firebox. Now, there's some spots in here where it's not so insulated, but fire. Cold to the touch. Literally, it's cold to the touch. I, I say it's 80 degrees, you know, but insulated firebox. Why do you need insulated? Well, convection. All that heat goes into your cooking chamber and not being pulled away by your, your ambient temperature. If you can get an insulated firebox, it's more expensive, well worth it. Makes your pit more uh, efficient. Give Big Phil a call. I'll uh, I'll drop his his contact information in this video. You know, super cool dude to work with. Uh, builds a pretty sick pit. Did I notice? Did I mention the the welds? Can't get any better than that. Anyway, um, so even temps, front to back. I would say they're very very even. So, top to bottom, there's about, about an 80 degree swing is what I'm showing on my digitals. Let's see. Um, so, about a 43 point, uh, about a 44 degree swing on that and about 20, about 60 degrees. About 60 degrees between top and bottom. So you got uh, a little on 275 there, almost 300 there. So, you know, there's about 50, 50 degrees there, I'm, th I'm thinking. So it's pretty close, pretty close. Oh, these I did have to add. Um, if you add these temperature port, pro port or temperature probe port ports, to a really thick tank like this one is, be prepared to go through some bits. Some pretty, pretty thick shit. So, anyway, um, front to back, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of variation, but I found that you probably wanna level your pit. So, I stick a level on here. I stick a level on here. Use your jack. Make sure it's level. You're gonna get even temperatures, right? Makes sense, huh? So, um, heat rises. So that's that's the reason why your your temper variations are or your temperature vari variations are are different. Um, but you want to kind of keep your heat level across it. That's how you get, you know, temperature fluctuations 
from from back to front if it if it's a little tilted in the front tilted in the front you're gonna have a hot spot up here now here's the thing if it's running cooler back here just raise the front up a little bit get some of that heat you know up towards the front even it out a little bit so there's some there's some tips but anyway um as i get going i'll uh, post some more and uh we'll just catch you up in a bit okay well it's a little bit later and we got everything well let's say everything everything's up and running so as you can see we've got a nice coal bed the uh got my first stick in there still going so a lot of people ask me well how how do you run it that's about as wide as i run it what i do is i typically take this touch it to the outside where the where the uh um latch is and that typically is about enough room to uh, maintain proper temp about uh, 325 on the top and you know 275 on the bottom 260 275 so this got three briskets going it's gonna be awesome as you can see it's rolling right along got some smoke it's gonna be freaking tasty for the wedding so in about uh, four or five hours I'll add the pork shoulders about four hours I suppose I'll add the pork shoulders and uh, get them going um, but yep everything's going along really really nicely let's see where our temps are about 340 on the top and 240 on the bottom yeah. that's a little off but you know Three forty, yeah, it's it's off a little bit. I think it's because I uh, opened the pit up, so it'll recover a little bit. So anyway, there there, like I said before, there's a little bit of a difference between the analog and the uh, the digital. So the next uh, time you'll see this is probably when I'm pulling them off and wrapping them up or have wrapped them up and put them back on so we'll uh, catch you then well it is officially the next morning and everything is on uh, less the sausage that we're going to cook today uh, that's just going to be for my family but um, this thing's been going for the better part of 10 11 hours now yeah I would say about 11 hours all the brisket is here Got some chicken up there brisket's kind of soaking up all the moisture which is great exactly what I want it to do so um, then we've got some pulled pork here yep 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 so that that's just a water pan that's nothing but water uh, it's got some drippings in there from from uh, the rack up there but Yep, she's been rolling throughout the night, and uh, it's kind of a you know, glorious morning. You know? Sun's just coming up. I took a couple days off from my normal job, doing the old IT stuff. That's what us geeks sometimes like to do. We do have other hobbies. You know, we either musicians cooks i happen to be both um 
I've got a lot of different hobbies, but you know this already. Anyway, this is what my coal bed looks like. It's been rolling for quite a bit. So, good, good, good hot fire. Um, but yes, anyway, this is pretty much where I'm going to cut the video off. And uh, we will uh, see you all later. Oh, this pit, um, from my last recollection, runs roughly $6,800 to $7,000 now. Um, I know Phil's prices have gone up since, since steel prices have gone up, the demand for these style of pits have gone up so what I paid back a year ago is not what they're um, going for now so if you're interested give him a call uh, he'll work with you and um, you know he's solid dude and uh, produces one hell of a pit just runs runs like a champ anyway uh, Everybody have a blessed weekend, and we will catch you on the next one.